Hello. Uh, so let's talk about uh, induced torque on rotating machines. Uh, our approach here would be the same as our approach in linear DC machine. So I hope you watched uh, that video para mas madali yung mas madali nyo siyang maintindihan. So uh, we'll first start with starting this machine at time. Oops, where is that? At time equal zero. So if you switch, uh, if you close that switch, so you'll have this source. Well, all this dummy resistor just represents all of the resistances in the source and in the in the coil. So all of those resistance will just lump it into one dummy resistor para lang to simplify the solution. Uh, and then from here. You now have a closed loop that goes from this source to this resistor to this loop that goes. Uh, sorry, I think I'll just redraw it. From this source to this resistor to this loop that goes this way. So that is how your current will flow. Okay, so if we look at the cross section that is of the loop that is basically this one. So I have the current going into the page and the current going out of the page in that perspective in this perspective so that is this cross section here. Okay. Now um So now uh, as I have said in linear DC machines you have uh, a certain length of of conductor under under a, a uh, under an amount of magnetic field so if you have current flowing in that conductor then you have an induced force so now because of this current going in this conductor the, because of the current that is flowing in this conductor which is under the influence of a certain magnetic field well it depends the, the direction of the magnetic field will depend on the position of the the conductor because this is a curved magnet so it's always perpendicular okay so you'll you you have the you, you now satisfy all of the requirements for you to have an induced force so you now have an induced force here for this conductor you have an induced force here for this conductor you have an induced force and take note those two forces are two separate induced forces um I have this one okay so take note that as I have said on my earlier video about uh, rotating machines you have four segments on this loop you have four segments on this loop you have a segment a B you have segment BC you have segment CD and you have segment DA now your force is I L cross B. So it's basically a uh, vector multiplication of the direction of the current and, uh, and the magnetic field. So if you consider sector BC and sector CD, the angle between the direction of the current there in that, in that, in that certain segment in the magnetic field is either 0 or 180 degrees. So if you get the vector multiplication of that, that is sine of 0 or sine of 180 or, or, or just 0. So, if you get all of the forces acting on this loop, so you have a force acting on AB, you have a force acting on CD, you have a force acting on BC, but that force is equal to zero because of sine of zero or sine of 180. And you have a force acting on DA, that is also zero. So, if you sum all of the forces, then you just get a force from AB and a force from, from CD. So, uh, how do we relate this to torque? Take note that torque is just force mm -hmm. times perpendicular distance or FR sine theta and that perpendicular distance would be this, uh, this radius. Okay, so that is just uh, ILB which is your force. Okay, where is that? that I have? Okay. This ILB, which is your force, and then multiplied to that radius for the perpendicular distance. 
and then you have that's the torque on AB and it's the torque on CD for the torque on BC and the torque on DA th those uh, that is both zero so if you compute for the total torque of the if you compute for the total torque of this loop you have a torque due to this conductor and the torque due to this conductor hence RILB plus RILB or 2 RILB so this is just uh, this is for larger DC machines this is basically a simplification of this formula uh, yeah but it's yeah, it's uh, there are certain assumptions there, but yeah, I think it's it's safer to just use this this one because this is just a simplification. Anyways, okay, so that's just it. Uh, two twice of R I L B because you have two conductors. Of course, if you have n number of turns, then you don't multiply it by two, but you multiply it by n because if it is n, let me show you. If it is n. Nope, not here. Mm -hmm. If it is n, therefore, mm -hmm. ilang beses siyang iikot. So, for every turn, you have twice. So, for every turn, you have twice. Therefore, it's, uh, no, it's not, it's not two. It's, it's not just two, it's two n. Because for every turn, you have two, two conductors. Mm -hmm. It's the same for the voltage, I think. Yeah, it's the same for the voltage. Because for every turn, take note here that for every turn you have two active conductors this one and this one so if you have multiple turns then you just multiply it by the number of turns so it's 2n vbl for n number of turns for for torque it is 2n rilb uh, uh, 2n rilb uh, for n number of turns okay so i think that's it for in the stork, I have a few examples here, and then later on, uh, we'll be talking about for loop DC machine. Yeah, okay.